Welcome to the offseason here in the UCF Knights Dynasty. Season number four did not go anywhere close to where we wanted it to be our first year in the Big 12. And I think we have a big offseason ahead of us. Now, before hopping into our offseason, how about this? The final four this year ended up being four number one seeds that made it. And then Duke loses by two to Xavier the first year without Coach K. Because remember, these were the rosters going into the 2023 actual season in real life. So going into 2022-23 season. So this coming basketball season. And now we hop back into reality here in the UCF Knights dynasty. PJ Sutton was our lone commit in the regular season. And he absolutely dominated in his senior year. He ended up being the number 164 ranked guy when it was all said and done. 34.4 points per game as a senior. That led the country in scoring. He is the number one scorer out of high school. And he is headed to UCF. A weakness of ours was getting the ball in the hoop. We have a guy now as a true freshman. We have a couple of guys moving on, including Bongani Mwangi, who has been here since day one. Darian Edwards, he transfers. I'm surprised by this because I thought that he was going to be a guy that would still contribute. He only averaged uh, four points per game last year. We tried him in the starting lineup. It just didn't work, but I thought he was a pretty good 3 and D guy off of the bench. And then we find out just Juan Woods, the stretch four or stretch five is going to the league now i did uh nerf his ratings to uh automatically declare or at least give him the option to because realistically just Juan was was a top recruit he came in and he didn't get the playing time he wanted and his game kind of suits the nba more than uh college basketball anyway now looking at our recruits going into the offseason we have some holes now to fill because we just lost two big men. So I'm definitely going to be going after a big man. The first guy that's actually interested in us is Leon Simpson. 10 points per game, 7 rebounds per game, 2 blocks per game. I mean, I like those numbers right there. I don't need a guy that's going to be a superstar. I just need a guy that's going to do the dirty work. Now that we have Sutton, I think we're going to build around Sutton and what he brings to the table scoring the basketball. Hopefully he comes in with a good three-point shot. That would definitely help. The next big man I want to look at is Jason Schuler. We have two scholarships to give out, so we definitely want to try to sign two big men. If it doesn't work out that way, we can always sign another guard, but big man is definitely the priority now. The third guy I want to look at is the number 651 uh, overall player, number 105 center in the nation, is Jose Weeks. One thing that I like about him is that he can make the three, 14%, but that's actually better than most centers come out in high school. And looking at what he averages, about 10 and 7, not bad. So I will make sure I contact him, try to get some film on him. I want to get some more information. Before I make any type of decision, I want to make sure I have all the details I need before, you know, actually offering the scholarship. I want to be sure with these uh, with this recruiting class. Sutton is a slam dunk recruit, so I'm glad I got him. But these big men are kind of harder to evaluate. Next is Sam Robertson. He averaged eight and 3.6 rebounds per game. I don't know why only 3.6 at six foot 11. He should have been averaging way more than that. I'm not so sure about him, so he's probably last as far as the big men we've seen so far. Boz Tracy is next, averaging 8.8 .8 points per game as a point guard, 1.3 steals per game, but only .7 assists. As a point guard, what are you doing here? Now, he does have some good quickness. Uh, he runs an 80 in the 20-meter sprint, but that's about it. I'm not really a big fan of him. The next big man I really, really like, though, is John Whitehead. Nine points per game, two blocks per game, 8.6 rebounds per game. I love those numbers. It lets me know that he's going to be good defensively and also decent offensively. And not a lot of recruits that are big men come out averaging double digits. So I like a guy that does the dirty work. And John Whitehead is another guy that I'm very, very interested. He was an All-State player in Kansas. Or, yeah, All-State player in Kansas. So we will have to see, you know, if he's interested in coming to the squad. The next big man I want to look at is Steve Andrews. 
he does shoot a better three ball like the other big men we saw earlier 14.1 percent averaging 9.7 and 7.9 rebounds actually pretty good another interesting uh big man i'm gonna come back to him he's kind of the same as weeks so i do want to keep those two at the top of the list but then i go to a shooting guard who i really really like here he is a six four six foot four guy out of laurel delaware john banks an all-state player there shooting 41 percent from three that does intrigue me he only averaged six points in high school but maybe he was just a three and d guy i just lost a three and d guy so it might be useful to get one so i'm gonna try to find out some more about him see like exactly what kind of player he is and make sure i have all the information on him before moving forward with a scholarship Jim Hamilton is next. I really like Jim Hamilton's size at six foot six, but too bad he cannot shoot. If he could shoot, I would have offered him a scholarship right out of the spot. He only averages 6.4 uh, three-point percentage in high school, and it's just not going to work. As a two-guard, you have to be able to shoot. Definitely not my cup of tea there. Five foot nine Emmanuel Swenson is the 298th ranked player in the country, averaging 10.9 points, 3.9 rebounds, 4.9 steals, and 4.7 assists. An interesting array of talent here for a 5'9 point guard. He's also very, very fast. There's a good chance that he would be the fastest man on the court if we had him on the squad. I'm not sure about him because he can't really shoot well, but Anthony Wake is next. He shoots a little better, 28% from the three-point arc, and then 6.6 .6 points per game, 4.1 rebounds. Nothing really truly jumps out. You know what? We uh, recruited Credible. I believe his three-point percentage in high school was at almost 50. I think it was at maybe 51. So that at least gives us you know, a good measuring stick on how these percentages work. For how they come in as freshmen and then the next guy is seven feet two but i don't really like his numbers and i will just pass him up now i liked what leon simpson brought to the table right away he was interested in us so i decided to go after him a little bit we found some details out about him you know he's very good at defensive rebounding that is a plus because that's where we struggled last year jose weeks is really really strong on the court we found that out in his scouting report so that bodes well for him and then john banks we didn't really get anything from him he's kind of the unknown here we are not in his top three schools right now but at 41 percent three-point shooting at six foot four we might want to go after him but first leon simpson's gonna get the first scholarship i just like having a guy that can go after the defensive rebounds i think that that's going to be a great tool for us so we will offer him a scholarship and then we offer it to john banks and we end up getting both of them banks is the big unknown but at six foot four and can shoot the three i want to see what he's going to bring to the table i'm not really sure but i want to see what's in that jar now, we do get invited to another preseason tournament here, the Anaheim Classic. So we will play in another preseason basketball tournament. We didn't play in one last year, and I'm excited to get back into one this year. Our schedule is actually pretty tough. We play Oklahoma, Liberty, St. Joseph's right away. Those three teams are like one of the highest rated teams in their conferences, respectively. Then we play Louisville the fifth game and Davidson the sixth game. Now, we play six games in a row in that week. So that is going to be very, very tough. Our guys are going to need to be well conditioned. So that is going to be very, very important. And then going into training this year, I decided to actually upgrade one of our facil facilities. You can see right now we're at all level zero. And what happens with this is that when you upgrade these facilities, your guys get attribute boot attribute boost so we're gonna upgrade the practice gym here it gives you three point field goal free throw and uh ball handling ability so we will upgrade that to level one everything else is at level zero meaning we don't get any additional boosts but in training they all got that extra little boost of plus one so let's go over the roster now that we see bongani mwangi move on and darian edwards and Jaswan woods at the five is going to be Austin Ball. We recruited him to get ready for this moment. 
we knew he would kind of have a red shirt year, and that's what happened. Now he's the starting center. Mwangi moves on. Ball takes his place. Reese Mahanic moves into that really veteran leader on this team, the senior, and he's going to take the place of Mwangi as that team captain. I'm hoping that he can have a big scoring year as well. The freshman P.J. Sutton comes in remarkable. 94 field goal, 78 three-point. I am happy to see that that high because his three-point percentage averaging in high school was low. It comes in actually decent. It's not great, but it's actually not bad. So he'll be able to take and make threes, and he has good range at 24. That is the max you can have. Good dribbling at 80, uh, strength at 84, 78 dunk. I mean, he's pretty good. I like his ratings right now. He's not really a defensive stopper, but he's going to be a very good scorer day one. Credible comes in, and he has 93 points. He is the first player in this series to have 90 plus three point. I'm anxious to see how good he's going to be as a shooter because historically in this series, he has been incredibly streaky. Sam Hayes is going to be the starting point guard again. I still kind of trust him over Bob Sharp. I feel like Bob Sharp kind of took a step back once we started playing against better competition. I'm hoping that he comes back to form. He's We're going to need it because now we just lost the guard, and I don't know how these freshmen are going to come in, so hopefully Bob Sharp has a good year this year. Tyler Kolchak comes in at 71 overall, 78 three-point. He'll be a stretch four, kind of a Molly Straylock comes in to his senior year, and he's going to be another big man coming off of the bench. He's going to play. Mitchell Porter, who was a big recruit last year, we kind of redshirted him, and it wasn't like a true redshirt, but he kind of just you know did not play. But we'll see what he does this year. I'm hoping to get him some playing time. He's only five foot eleven, so I think his shooting ability is going to need to be his best ability. And right now, it's just at a 79, so we will have to see how he does. Now, who will play, replace the six foot four recruit we just got? Jacob Hill. He's going to be a shooter. He averaged 41% from the three-point line in high school. He comes in with an 83 points. So if I'm looking at the trajectory of him, incredible. I'm guessing that he's going to have that similar arc of uh, improvement. He has the lower field goal shooting rating, but that three point at 80 is going to be reliable. So if we need multiple three point shooters in the game, he's definitely going to be in there. Now, the six foot 10 freshman we recruited also is going to turn into Bishop Pacheco. Now, Bishop Pacheco is going to be an awesome defensive rebounder. The scouting report said if you need a defensive rebounder, he's your guy. He comes in with 95 defensive rebounding. This is great because in situations where I see the other team is killing me on offensive boards, I'm definitely putting Pacheco in. He's definitely going to be a guy who's going to play quite a bit. I want to talk about the walk-on freshman we had last year, Armando Hector. He's going to be good, and he's going to play. Even though he's got a lower overall, 81 field goal is one of the best for a guard on the team. So if I need a guard that's going to be able to score, he's going to be it, and he's also going to play some point guard. He can pass the ball well with the 84 rating. That actually affects the success of the shot going in as well, so I'm definitely going to use that. And then our bench guys, Devontae Swore is going to be a reserve. The other two guys won't play at all, so it, I don't even want to go over them at all. So that's going to do it here for the offseason. Let me know what you guys think. Who's going to be our breakout player this year? I already know P.J. Sutton's going to be a good scorer. I don't know how good, but I think he's going to be really, really good. I think that he's going to be a star in this series, hopefully. We haven't had one really since Antonio Johnson at the start of this series. So maybe P.J. Sutton fills in that role. I did not rename him also, but the other two guys I did rename to our uh, subscriber members. So I just want to see how P.J. Sutton. I love the name. I want to see how that name played out in the series. But that's going to do it here in the offseason. Can't wait to get into season number five. Our second year in the Big 12, we have to bounce back big. Hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I hope the rain don't come